So welcome to the half pint, guys. Yeah. One year old next week. What we're going to do? Do we have to exchange presents, or should you people not... bring us a gift? You mean you've not posted me one yet? <laughs> of course I have. Uh, it was a year ago, and hopefully it will <laughs> arrive any time now. <laughs> I think if you post one now, it'll just about arrive as I arrive in Oslo, won't it? Yeah, probably. Yeah, likely. <laughs> Are we going to do anything to mark the occasion? We should. We should. Um, but something that doesn't take any effort or planning or <laughs> money. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, should we just do like a, a video version of the podcast for YouTube? We could try. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, I... Uh, I've gotten some uh, comments on my hairdo lately, and uh, yeah, although I do rock the crazy professor look, I am I thinking told Michelle about, not uh, to say anything to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it is. Uh, it's it's weird though because when you look yourself in the mirror, uh, and it's something to do with the lighting as well. I'm I'm very light at the top, um, but when you see yourself on video in your workshop, it like. <laughs> Oh, there's really not a lot going on on, to <laughs> on top there, or inside for that matter. But <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I'm thinking, all right, I, I should address it. I should cut it down to size. But then again, for continuity, for, <laughs> I would like to get the, the padlock video done before I do that. But yeah, maybe I should, uh, I should cut my hair and dress up then for the anniversary episode. So I have a goal now. Yeah, you're gonna be looking your best, are you? Yeah, of course. I mean, <laughs> doesn't take much, but <laughs> oh, well, if you, if you don't get around to it, don't worry about it. We love you just the way you are, Havar. Yeah. Okay. But that's <laughs> yeah. It's it's on the effort side, but yeah. Should we dress up like the Blues Brothers, or should we find another <laughs> theme? <laughs> I could I could bring I could put the wedding funeral suit on if you like. <laughs> <laughs> the wedding funeral, <laughs> <laughs> like so, two for one deal. <laughs> Is it or champagne went, and? Uh... Yeah, if I if I went for a job interview, it'd be the job interview suit as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Choice of about seventeen ties, though, KJ. <laughs> I got you. Got me beaten there. <laughs> I think I have three suits though. Which I don't really like either. You've got a very dapper one, like a mask style suit, haven't you? Like a gangster. <laughs> no, it's just that I look like a gangster when I put on a suit. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. And then the question is is it a British gangster? Because that is like the polyester. Uh... <laughs> no, okay. that's Italian. Oh, yeah, but shiny, I think... shiny grey polyester. Isn't that the British? I mean, I, I see it's doing a really like uh, express oh, okay. comeback now with Oasis uh, putting tickets out. I mean, they did rock that uh, 90s thug style, like long polyester jacket. Uh, I don't know. Isn't the British gangsters don't? They just have tracksuits? Like yeah, tracksuit. <laughs> That's the name. Yeah, yeah. tracksuit jacket. Yeah. <laughs> Not back in the crate. Cray Twins days, it was all being very finely dressed. Yeah. Get your suit from Savile Row. <laughs> yeah, that's really... I mean, it's... If you if you strip away the aesthetics of Peaky Blinders, it's, it's just any other show. It could be... Uh, what's the American show about the motorcycle gang? Sons of Anarchy or something. I yeah. mean, it is family and rivalry and everything is the same in Yellowstone or whatnot. But yeah, those suits yeah. really make it... Uh, yeah. I mean, if you're going to be a criminal, do it properly. Suit up. Do it yeah. in style. Yeah. Yeah, put something on that's really impractical to fight or run in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It makes you really uh, easy to spot as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah at least today. Yeah. And yeah. even more then. Yeah. <laughs> like, no. yeah. Got the gangsters walking down the streets. Oh, poor guys. They're off to a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> or a wedding or a job interview. <laughs> 
<laughs> and they're thinking reserved dogs and they're really cool. But, yeah. but then the question is, I mean, is, is suiting up and doing a video podcast, is, is that enough? Should we celebrate in any other way or should we are you prepared? Are you prepared to do anything and follow through with anything else? Of all, is the question. <laughs> no. And then, of course, <laughs> that would probably bleed into, well, let's save it until we meet up at... Uh, Oslo in a few weeks. I have been looking into gifts actually, and I realized, all right, this gift Glenn might not get through airport security, and you're traveling light. I'm guessing you're not checking in luggage. No, I'm not. No, exactly. So, yeah. So yeah. that's out. All right. Then. I'm putting that Was over it here. A, and a model go. ship or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I saw this. I saw this thing online, and I made like a, a light bulb knife thing. That looks really cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's a light. I promise. Yeah, sure, sure. sure. <laughs> so I'm going to make some comments now, and I don't want anybody to think I'm hating on Laura Camp. But have you seen the latest video? Yeah, that was a filler. <laughs> I felt cheated. <laughs> I was waiting. When does the building start? And then I started yeah. moving the. Yeah. Cur- wait, 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 what? No. And then I just, all right, I'm not. Yeah. And then I found I'm, someone who built the 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 SpongeBob boat car instead. Oh. That was amazing. So yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I was thinking when I saw Larkham's video, was that? Are you sure that that's trash? Is that just someone who? Yeah, put I was thinking that because yeah. they were gonna transport something uh, too tall, and they just took it <laughs> off, and then we're gonna come back and get it. Yeah, so, yeah. Well, I mean, you're not really allowed to take stuff just lying around because someone just put it there, and maybe come back to to pick it up. No. Especially if it's obviously trash, then <clears throat> I mean, you're helping the sanitation department. But, but the problem is, if it's on the, I mean, you wouldn't show that on the video, but. Maybe you should knock on the door and like, is that thing out there yours? Did you just put it there hoping somebody would steal it? I would happily do so. And then <laughs> they would say yes. And then someone in the living room, who was that? Oh, someone was asking if that thing outside and it's been there for weeks. And so I just said it was ours and yeah, just take it. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that a classic thing? If you put something out and put a note on it saying free no one touches it but if yeah. you five quid then no one steals <laughs> it's it gone <laughs> immediately yeah yeah no one wants your rubbish <laughs> but if you think it's got a value yeah <laughs> yeah no i felt cheated by that video i um i didn't even watch her advert at the end <laughs> <laughs> i'll show did. you laura <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, that's uh, like watching a I Like to Make Stuff video. I just swiftly turn it off when it comes to the bloopers part because I don't like that. So I'm going to show him in the analytics that <laughs> one person stopped watching. <laughs> oh, I wish people stopped right at the very end on mine. <laughs> I think most of my views get a third of the way through, through before they stop watching. But the question is, though, I mean, I have never looked into it, but you can, to some extent, dictate when you get ads in your video. And I never cared about that. I just leave it on the standard settings and never think about it. But of course, when I go back and look at my videos, I'm I'm logged in as myself and I have a, a paid YouTube subscription, so I don't get ads at all. So should I then make a dummy account just to log on to see how my videos actually feels with the ads? Yeah. And then I can subscribe to myself. So I get one more. So if I have 20 dummy accounts, I could <laughs> at least get to 4,000. So it's like, you're getting very close to that, that I can fix this myself. <laughs> <laughs> just go around the office uh, at lunchtime and see who hasn't locked their computer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so subscribe. Going to subscribe uh. and start a playlist and you walk off. <laughs> I know two people that are worth four subscribers to me. <laughs> yeah, that's quite handy. Yeah. Yeah, I got I got a few more this week, which is nice. Nice. Yeah, I think I've had about eleven subscribers this past few days. Nice, nice. Yeah. Just through drilling a doing some really long drilling through a piece of wood on the lathe. <laughs> yeah, but I mean that looked rather cool actually. 
Yeah. <laughs> I, I I would not think that you would succeed in that. I think you'd like the bloopers video for that, KJ, when the smoke's pouring out of the center of it. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Have you, have you published that? I haven't. I might, I no. might do that just a little bit. Yeah, there. of course. Definitely. I mean, that's yeah. uh, the kind of short video that could blow yeah. up. Because, I mean, <laughs> but that's really good content, isn't it? If you can make a video where people are like, I can't stop watching this because something is going to go horribly yeah. wrong. And then it doesn't. But, I mean, you've kept yeah. people. The retention is going to be all through yeah. the charts. So, yeah. Sh- Shamey on, uh, from McKenna workshop creations who we met at uh, makers yeah he commented on the on the reel and said i was watching that sort of cringing the whole way through <laughs> and that's the thing that's a lathe video so you could you could easily loop that clip for at least five six minutes yeah. without people noticing so i was sitting there and I thought, well, when is it gonna snap when is it gonna burn <laughs> when is it yeah <laughs> It was uh, actually a success. It did work, apart from a bit of smoke. <laughs> did you think, uh, how, how sure were you that it was going to succeed? Not very. I mean, I set it up and took a little video for you two guys and thought, <laughs> this this looks as dodgy as hell, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and it got me thinking. Now, I, I saw this. <coughs> I saw this knife maker on Instagram, like, all right, I, I, all my knife videos are doing poorly now because Instagram don't want to show knives. So she started painting faces on them and put hats on just to like, <laughs> break up the shape. And they're really funny. And then I saw your video like, oh, that would be cool. You can, I mean, you could actually make a gun. I mean, you have the barrel there. Yeah, yeah. Could you make a wooden working gun? Of course, it would fire once and then... It's the perfect murder weapon. You shoot someone and you throw it in the fire and the evidence is gone. But that video would be blocked so hard. It's like, how to get away with murder? Wooden gun. <laughs> I am not firing a wooden gun. <laughs> well, you, you have a string and you're two kilometers down the road in a different county when you're tugging on it. <laughs> yeah, it would be it. fun trying it out. How big of a block of oak would you have? As the, in the firing mechanism for actually having it to hold Probably up. Probably not that big, actually. No, but uh, rather would, chunky. Be rather tricky. I mean, I'd have to get a firearms license first. Yeah. No. Yeah, we live in no, no, no. But, but but before anyone comes looking, it's already on the fireplace. No, I haven't seen any gun. <laughs> yeah, I, can't, I can't. I can't buy a bullet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the issue. Yeah, yeah. I see that. I could, make a, but... I could make a wooden air rifle. Yeah. Oh, we have. Oh, this is this is a funny story. When I was in the army, um, one of the guys uh, in my troop, he, well, at the um, we we had a day at a shooting range, and he just pocketed two pieces of ammunition, and he brought them home uh, to the the barracks, and he had it in his locker, and he showed us, and it's like. Oh, I, I took these and I'm, I'm going to try and sell them on the, the black market. And i like, you stupid twat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that is like regular hunting ammunition here in Norway. So everyone with a gun and a hunting license can buy those for like uh, 50 cents a pop or something. They are yeah. worthless even on the black market. <laughs> I mean, and he's like, oh, no. But if you get caught with those... Oh man, I don't want to be you. And of course, every now and then they have like they have training. I mean, the the military police they actually use the barracks for training, search parties and dogs and whatnot. So e- even when they weren't looking for something, they just had while well, while all the soldiers were out doing stuff and the barracks were empty, they used them as a training ground for actually doing yeah. searches and so on. And he had left his locker open and everything. <laughs> It's like so he was so lucky not getting caught on that and like and then he really panicked. Oh, but what are I gonna do? I can't throw them in the trash or what? And so he ended up just like throwing them into a field in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I kind of wondered afterwards, like this is many years ago, what happened to that guy? Because he was Dumb. He was not the sharpest uh, spoon in the shed. Uh, so where is he today? Probably a politician, for what I care. About. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
middle management. I would yeah, say. middle yeah. management, obviously. <laughs> Joe, uh... a wooden gun, or I could make a cannon as well. Um, I yeah. have a black powder, so uh, yeah, yeah. Then again, shipping that to you, it's a bit yeah. I tried to make something like that when I was a teen uh, because I uh, I did some uh, uh, I went shooting one you know uh, with a small caliber like the twenty twos yeah uh, like the skeet shooting I think it's called oh, whatever no it's not that uh, just like so I had some shooting? yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I had uh, all those small uh, things, and I so I just took two um, wrenches and pulled the bullets off, so I can pour out the gunpowder because mm -hmm. that's something safe you could do in your boy room. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so then I, I took uh, uh, a big piece of wood and drilled a hole in it and put in an aluminium rod that fit <laughs> perfectly, and just poured the gunpowder into it and put in. I think it was uh, the head of a throwing dart I put in, and I had <laughs> drilled a little hole and uh, and uh, and light it, uh, and it went, poof, and that thing just went me pop out. Of the... <laughs> <laughs> I think it went like thirty centimeters or something like that. So that was my entire foray into trying to make a cannon. Uh, <laughs> I think you should consider yourself very lucky there, KJ. Yes, yes. Wait. <laughs> We did the same. Uh, I, I I did also uh, uh, attend uh, <laughs> competitive shooting at an uh, early age. And of course, we had a lot of ammunition laying around. And what I did, I did the same thing. We, we pulled the bullets out of a couple of them. And then we took the gunpowder from the one and it emptied it into the other. So it was like to the yeah. brim. And then we took a pliers and we like crimped the edge. So it was really oh. tight kind of risky in itself and then we, we took that holster with all that gunpowder between two rocks uh, and a tea candle under it and then we ran like crazy and then of course we ran around the corner of the house so we, we were smart enough to realize we should have a house between us and that and there was my father and when you see two kids running for their lives taking cover <laughs> behind the house of course he asked <laughs> what are you doing and we like we hadn't planned for that, so we just, oh, we, 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 we. And they were like going to look around the corner. It's like, no, don't look around the corner, we, we. And we told him what he did. And he's like, you stupid mother. And then bang. And you heard this dung, 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 on the rooftops of the houses because everyone had this uh, metal uh, plate roofs. And yeah, uh, that's the one time I was, uh, was close to grounded that you can be. <laughs> and yeah. Um, we never did that. That was that was proper dumb. <laughs> My version of that was, uh, I mean, emptying out and put, pouring out the gunpowder and lighting it, it went psh, like a fuse in the movies. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I, and I, as you did, I took a lot of them and poured it into the same up to the brim and thought, I can light that. That's a good idea. <laughs> and it started, psh, oh, like a f fountain. Nice. Then bang. It's sad. <laughs> and that, that shell is flew across the room. And I just was just sitting admiring it like a meter away from it and I mean, that was just <laughs> stupid luck that nothing happened i don't yeah. think my parents knew what i did in that basement uh, but yeah i didn't but, do that again at least but still I, i'm blaming it on my parents um of course my, my father made me uh, a crossbow at some point and of course we made some arrows and we lost them and it was cumbersome to make good straight arrows. And then at some point, I think my mother bought like several kits at the sale for like these darts with all the arrows. And I figured out if I took a dart arrow and I trimmed down one of the fins, it would fit in the groove of that crossbow. And holy crap that I'm, I'm not kidding that crossbow shot darts a hundred yards easily and <laughs> i aimed at our wall and i mean the entire tip was embedded into wood you could not pull it out with your fingers if you tried i mean we were 10 at the time so and yeah 
that one, we went to the forest because we are hunters now and we were looking for birds <laughs> and whatnot. And we shot and we lost all of those arrows. But I mean, that we didn't take anyone's eye out. Is, <laughs> that's uh, a feat in itself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those arrow bolts are bloody dangerous. They skit off everywhere, don't they? In all different directions. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe your dad made you one of those at 10. What a cool dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I guess I guess he was a maker as well. So I would like to make one, and now I have an excuse here. Have it, and then yeah, yeah. So when are you making one for your kids? <laughs> I already have the rubber bands. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to go one better than your dad. You've got to get it to him before the ten. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna start easy. I'm gonna start with the just some some easy slingshots and uh, get them some uh, steel uh, bearings uh, <laughs> to, <laughs> as ammunition here go break some windows i never <laughs> got slingshots to actually work i guess i wasn't good enough making them i didn't have a good enough rubber for it i think but i was re really liked to build uh, crude uh, flamethrowers from uh, deodorant cans just <laughs> yeah with, with a lever on it so you can actually you pull a lever and it sprayed out uh, the gas and you had a little pilot light at the front that was really fun walking around and pretending to be some kind of yeah I I've, don't know I've, what I've, uses a flamethrower in a, I've done a that area, and but... uh, I think it was in this in the same breath of air that we realized all right if you if you put fire to a plastic shopping bag uh, and you put it on a stick, of course, the melted plastic <coughs> is going to drip off yeah, and yeah. it's burning. So it makes this really funny sound. So, so we spend days just lighting up plastic bags. And then, of course, that gets boring. So you start... What sound does it make if you spin it around your head while it's on fire? <laughs> and, then, <laughs> uh, and then, of course, uh, as you do, you have this, I don't know what they're called in English, but uh, behind our house, we had like um, these marshlands and some, like there were small islands of dry grass. And then, of course, you could light those into fires. And then, of course, it didn't spread very much because it was very wet uh, area around. And then we just moved on and we continued. And then we came to an area that was not as wet. And the fire almost got away from us. And it's like, <laughs> I can still feel that feeling when you're desperately like, all right, you're trying to stomp on fire. Uh, and I think we were three or four uh, friends who just stomping and stomping and stomping and we realize if we are not able to stop this fire this is going to be a forest fire the fire brigade is going to come here and our parents going to know and like in that desperation <laughs> you get really efficient at stomping at fire <laughs> but after that we just we didn't even say it but it was like everybody knew all right this, we're not doing this anymore <laughs> i'm glad enough of that <laughs> yeah and then, of course, I told this story at university to my friends there. And this one guy, uh, yeah, we did something similar. There was, where I come from, there's an old house. It has been abandoned for years because uh, it was an old house and the family who inherited it, they lived somewhere else. So, of course, we used to play there when we were kids. And in the kitchen room, there was an old fridge. And it was after New Year's Eve or something. So they had some fireworks left. So what if you put that into the fridge, light it and run? That's what it did. And that house burned down to the ground. And he said, nobody still don't know. So he only told, <laughs> <laughs> told us there. And, and that was like 15 years after it happened. And he's still like, I, uh, I can't. Well, we were kids. So nothing would happen today. But that house burned to the ground. <laughs> it's like, Jesus. all right, we got lucky. Can you imagine the worry on those for those kids for the first couple of weeks after that happened? Oh, someone was having a rough they time. They didn't sleep, that. did they? <laughs> <laughs> no. And rightfully so, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh dear. Yeah. I'm not admitting to anything on the podcast, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed that you got very, very quiet yeah. when we started our walks down memory lane. Yeah. We'll, 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 pack, we'll pick it up in October. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah do, do remind me in October. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of October, I, I had a thought 
uh, I don't know how uh, in England you buy uh, wine and strong beer at the supermarket, don't you? Yes. Uh, and, uh, and strong spirits, is that a special store or is that... No, that's a supermarket or little shop down the corner yeah. or... So, so do you have... Garages, any... petrol stations. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, you can. So, yeah. so do you have any... Or mark special... at the corner, yeah. 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 Any special stores with a big uh, variety of you get of drinks or you do get dedicated um, booze shops. Um, they're not they're not as big as the supermarket selection, to be honest with you. But you do get specialist wine sellers, so you get a nice yeah. selection of wines and things you can be- get from like Majestic Wine, for instance. That's a shop near us. Because I was in. thinking that uh, any time you're in Scandinavia, you really should try out. Uh, Systembolaget in Sweden or Win Monopolet in, in Norway because I think that would be an interesting thing for you to see a, a yeah. store specialized into anything alcoholic with <laughs> oh, okay. lots and lots and lots to choose from. Yeah, they, they, just... they, they have one at the train station where you arrive actually so oh, that's, okay. uh, you don't have to go off track to see one. Would I think it be it's open? open on Saturday, Saturday isn't it? Yeah, so it's going to be on. So. Yeah, you go too late on Friday, so it's going to be a Saturday excursion. Uh, but okay. it's a five-minute excursion from Skopje Festival, and so you uh, got okay. time for that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fill up the hip flasks. Head back. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, I, I can't I imagine. <laughs> I cannot imagine they'd have more of a selection than the French supermarkets. To be fair. No, no, that's. They were insane, and the booze was so cheap there. But you not can... not for spirits so much, but beer and wine was dirt cheap. I mean. You can uh, the the price is expensive in Norway. Uh, wine, as well, but not that much as hard liquor. But the good thing with having a monopoly, they they have people that work with it, and they have like these uh, wine tasting courses every now and then. So they have yeah. people that are specialized in different regions and different kind of booze. So if you ask them and you say, "I'm having that," can you give me some yeah, advice? Yeah. They they do have really good advices, and I think they are one of the largest purchasers and importers of alcohol in the world. So they have the best deals, and they are well connected. So if you want a very specialized wine made from uh, one guy you met at a holiday 14 years yeah. ago in Peru... Yep, they can just go and, oh, yeah, we can get you a bottle of that. And, of course, it will take them a couple of weeks because they just add it to a big list and then it will get compiled and with the regular shipments and so on. But getting it shipped to the store doesn't cost you anything. So if you're looking for something specific, uh, it might take a couple of weeks to get it, but it will get there and you don't have to pay extra for shipping. So that's really I think, nice. I think they'll be able to cater for my needs pretty easily. I'll just walk in and say, it's, uh, it's Friday night. I'd quite like to get pissed. What do you reckon? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and you have the assorted. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm question, but how? Then the question is, okay, but how, how would you like to feel the next day? What taste? Yeah. Uh, what foul aftertaste in your mouth do you like to wake up with? Do you want? Uh... I think. I what think what time your... schedule are we talking about? Do you want to <laughs> yeah. be pissed now, or do you want to be yeah. pissed in a couple of hours and have fun all the way yeah. there? Or. Yeah. <laughs> I think the only requirement would be, and I really quite like the first glass of it to taste nice. I really don't care after that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. Now they sell like you can get uh, like these pre-mixed drinks. So you, you can get like a, a decent mojito or something that yeah, tastes yeah. well for the first one. And then you can just go over to chugging vodka <laughs> or whatever you need. <laughs> at the... <laughs> Yeah, looking forward to October already. Yeah, <laughs> Oktoberfest. <laughs> oh, <Ooh>. yay! <laughs> KJ's out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have no stamina when it comes to that. I think um, it's a few years ago. Me and my wife went to uh, Rock am Ring, which is a huge rock festival in Germany, and. Uh, she met up with some friends from university there, and one of them um, at university he got a girlfriend that uh, she's the well uh, she's first in line to inherit uh, like a yeah a champagne farm 
in the actual oh, wow. Champagne district. So of course, when mm-hmm. they were nice. finished studying, it's like, yeah, I'm moving back to work on the family farm, and he's like, so am I. So of course, they are <laughs> they are married today and they live on that farm, and and of course, um, um, the day job is making champagne, and he keeps uh, sending messages uh, to uh, his friends and. Yeah, I got up at 10 today, and then we tested some new batches before we went and had lunch, and then and people like, just fuck you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Someone scored the best job ever. But of course, that gets boring after a while. So of course, uh, in their free time, they experiment because they, they have a farm. And he, of course... Oh, that's so bad. We've all experimented in the past. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But not and on of the course, farm. <laughs> and of course, they, they they drove up from France, so they always they, they had a case of champagne. So you were sitting there in the mud and in the pissing rain, and you were drinking champagne you could never afford to pay for. But they just like they didn't put a dent in their storage to just bring that. <laughs> but also, one of the experimental bottles he had was actually not theirs, but something he got from I think it was Brazil or something. It's it's a bottle, and in that bottle, it was a, a full-size crab, and then, uh, <laughs> okay. of course, it was filled with alcohol, and that alcohol was mixed with uh, basically crab juice because it was, <laughs> God knows Ew. how long it was inside there. And I have a picture somewhere. I'm gonna find that picture and post it on the Instagram uh, <laughs> page. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the only drink. Uh, at the party where I haven't tasted at all because that looks so disgusting and people who tasted it like it tastes like salty water basically and it, yeah. as you would expect but it was really nice I, I did take the like how did they split the bottle to get the crab in there and then weld <laughs> yeah. it back together but I think there was uh, uh, some etiquette or something covering up a seam but yeah no they put the crab in there when it's a baby <laughs> that, that was my first thought, but I think that seems like a lot of work because the end result did it didn't seem very high end. <laughs> I think st- <laughs> I would be looking at that bottle as the boo starts running out of the party and be thinking, "Well, I like seafood, I like alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> How bad could it be? <laughs> Pass me a bread of loaf and some yeah. mayonnaise, please." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is getting drunk. On the grill. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, should we, uh, on that crabby note, should we call it a night? <laughs> it might be best. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Uh, yeah. I'll, I'll spend some minutes looking for that picture. Um, I'll see you, on our, see you all on our first birthday. Woo-hoo. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, should we have cake? We should have cake. Yeah, we should have cake. Okay. And one I'll candle. Shelter, yeah. I'll get shelter bake as a cake. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah, and uh, KJ can fix the candle. I mean, uh, like some, some <laughs> yeah. gun gunpowder in uh, a brass casing. <laughs> then, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll Fair see about that. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>